Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new FTX and BlockFi update coming over here when it comes to the bankruptcy news and a little bit of Voyager news too as well. Now, if you guys have been seeing these kind of court documents and everything going and looming for the Chapter 11 bankruptcy, this has been awful. But as of right now, it does seem like the proper official like assets and what they kind of own and just like pretty much the big declaration of like what kind of happened in the bankruptcy case so far. And this will also be including up on BlockFi and as well. Also, like I said, we'll have a little bit of Voyager talk. Uh, but basically, the FTX situation, as a lot of folks know, is not good. This is really bad. And there's also like a lot more cases of fraud. We had text messages come out. Uh, like apparently they were also literally buying employees houses in terms of contracts or advisors and everything. It's ridiculous. I'm going to kind of go through the first day of uh, court documents and kind of showcase this all up over here. So if any of you guys, like I said, are in BlockFi, this kind of relates because as of right now, BlockFi was involved and is owed money and also might have money in FTX. We'll get a lot more information from BlockFi in the near future. They have been very quiet. And if any of you guys are BlockFi creditors to I and myself, uh, if you guys want to, I keep saying if you guys want to subscribe, I've been doing a lot of like the Celsius news and everything else too in these bankruptcy cases. So if you guys want to, feel free to. But uh, everything is not looking so good. They kind of first saw I'll start with this. The whole process with FTX is basically whenever you apply for bankruptcy, uh, typically you have like a day one document, which I'm going to show you guys over here. We're kind of like a rough thing. Voyager had this. Celsius had this. And essentially what it is is like a document saying like, hey, this is what kind of happened. Here's what's been happening. And here's like the wrongdoings or like things we have to resolve or maybe even depending on the company, potentially good news. So as you guys probably know, FTX owner is now gone. He is not a CEO. He's not involved in the company. And of right now, the company is confirmed in bankruptcy. Uh, chapter 11 is more so in regards to like, there's a chance for restructuring. There's a chance for like a buyout. Although with a lot of fraud, a lot of these assets missing, it seems unlikely. I think this will probably lead towards a chapter seven liquidation, if anything. So uh, basically we had a lot of folks kind of come into this information and this was pretty much, like I said, the very first day document where they have all the assets and what they kind of have in the first place. So there's a lot of things meant on in. I'm going to highlight some of the stuff and go a little bit more in detail with it, but as you guys can see, they have like the consolidated assets as of September 30th, uh, which is a little while ago too as well, where they have cash and cash equivalents of uh, four, 144 million. We have restricted cash too as well at 267 million. We have custodial funds, account receivables, etc. But this, I want to really stress this. It's actually probably worth listening to. This whole thing was awful. In terms of this, apparently they have like, uh, like FTX had no liquidation inside their own exchange, like Alameda. So basically, if they were trying to go and do like, like you know, try to like do stuff on like leverage, they would not get liquidated on FTX, which is how do you lose money if you're somehow literally doing illegal things in your own exchange? They're basically saying they have around $1.3 billion in terms of assets, which this actually might be some sort of good news, mainly because with this, like a lot of folks are saying the numbers are way lower. This at least is slightly higher higher than expected. Plus they also do have equity in other companies too. Uh, but they're basically saying like right now their cash was really low and their crypto was very low too as well in the ratio for it. So in more regards out for the block five folks, they do actually have this over here where they have loans receivable of $250 million consist of a loan by debtor West Realm tries incorporated to BlockFi Inc. of 250 million FTT tokens. Now, that's first of all kind of bad, mainly because it does seem like that weird revolving loan of credit may have actually been an FTT tokens, which is kind of going to be kind of weird. I'm not sure if they'll put that as a secured of just the evaluation, because typically bankruptcy stuff is done in USD, which might be good then for BlockFi consumers, because that means they won't have to have to worry about stuff with the FTT token, or so getting cash, and that would probably put them as a secured creditor, which would put them on above, which might be good, but at the same time, they may try to get a paid pack more in the FTT tokens, which as you guys know are probably worthless. It's going to be a really strange case with BlockFi, and that might be also why they shut down their, uh, basically their whole thing, because if they're out hundreds of millions of dollars, it may not be possible for them to get like any money back. But at the same time, we still want to find out if like Genesis was holding BlockFi assets or if uh, basically FTX had them on there too. So that's why I really want to know if BlockFi, if they file for bankruptcy, I almost want them to know or I want us to know so we can see how much information is available, what percentage percent like potentially coming back to as well, and all of that. But basically with the FTX too, we have, I'll probably maybe go through Simon Dixon's comments over here because he summarized it pretty good, where we have the actual new person like in charge of bankruptcy stating, 
Never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information as occurred here. From compromised systems integrity and faulty regulatory oversight abroad to the concentration of control in the hands of a very small group of inexperienced, unsophisticated, and potentially compromised individuals, this situation is unprecedented. And this was in regards to someone who was involved in Enron, which was one of the worst bankruptcy cases. So seeing this statement there does not bode well. Now, there's a big thing to kind of know that uh, FTX creditors will be getting a lot of these different very types of like assets for this stuff, where they'll get the cash and cash equivalents, cryptocurrency, which is held, FTX UX, which they can maybe sell, Ledger, they have all these capital markets to the NFTs, and BlockFi loans, if BlockFi potentially owes them money. We'll have to wait and see their entire like things coming out with it. We also have the cash and cash equivalents too for all these other various companies with Genesis, Digital Assets, uh, Pionic, and Modelo and stuff like that, and all these other various companies too, such as like FTX.com. And they did actually, like as I mentioned, had a lot of real estate. They were actually for some reason selling a lot of real estate to these, uh, like basically either buying it for their own companies. We heard some rumors that some of the huge like compounds are paid in either FTX shares and FTT tokens, which was ridiculous. Uh, but at least they do own the real estate technically as well. Now, a big thing to kind of note too is that it looks like BlockFi line of credit may have been the FTT tokens, as you mentioned too, as well, which is not good to see. And they also have more hedge activities, including strategic strategies, including arbitrage, market making, yield farming, and training volatility. So here's kind of a big thing to note in terms of the cash balances, where uh, it does seem like they do have, if you guys can see this down below, uh, around $564 million over here. So there is at least like a half billion dollars in cash, although the liabilities are seemingly at $9 billion. And if you kind of factor in those two other holes, uh, I mean, like at least it's slightly higher than what we were expecting. But even at the same time, a lot of those like SRM tokens and MAPS tokens, some of the creditors are saying like the crypto on hand might be worth like not even a million dollars. And I, I think you can maybe get a little bit more than that, but like it's, it's not, not a lot. Uh, and like in terms of ratios too, 500 million might sound a lot, but for 9 billion, that's like 0.5%, which is very, very low. They said the new board has control of $750 million in crypto across companies. The debtors have secured in new cold wallets approximately $750 million of crypto that the debtors believe in is attributable to either the WRS, Alameda, or .com Cello. So that's at least like other side stuff as well. And we're not talking about like, you know, the SRM or maps. That's like a separate thing for the company. So they also did go and say they had billions of dollars in also equity, which would go to customers or as well maybe to BlockFi too. And then BlockFi would be able to sell it or like reuse it as well. So keep that in mind. So the main companies in the Alam Alameda silo and Venture Cello did not also, though, for some odd reason, not keep books. Now, we've been hearing this now from employees. So apparently they didn't like they were having employees that even know who is on payroll. They're just paying random stuff. They had people that were apparently like random managers were approving sales and money. They weren't necessarily having random like they wouldn't have like a proper accounting team. They just had like the let's say like a team lead be like, yeah, you spent 50 bucks at dinner. Sure. Here is the money instead of having like a proper audited system or a proper anything. And it seems I think apparently with uh, customer funds or apparently customer funds were all commingled instantly. As in like if you had money in like Bitcoin or whatever, it was more so funneled into a huge pool rather than anything else. It also kind of seems like F, uh, you know, the good old Sam Aruski himself is apparently took like a, a multiple billion dollar loan from the company itself. So to his own personal self himself, if that makes sense. So we're hearing a lot of these awful things where the cash assets are, I guess, maybe slightly better than expected at the 500 million mark. Equity is still there, and you could still technically sell the FTX US, FTX the website itself, and you get all the customers, and you can potentially maybe have some company be like, yeah, we'll pay $100 million, $500 million to try to go get a crypto company in, although I'm not sure who would do that. But as well, like, it just is really bad. Like, they had no accounting. They were paying, like, buying people houses randomly in the Bahamas. They were literally buying stuff with FTT tokens. The BlockFi loan might have also been an FTT tokens, which is also awful for BlockFi creditors. And hopefully they have, like, at least some sort of a decent amount of assets. I want, like, at least, like, 60 to 90%. But... As well, it kind of just seems like this personal loans, Alameda not having liquidation on their websites, everything involved in this was just utterly just wrong. And I, I also want to see where like the SEC and all these other various companies were, like government entities, because this was going on for years as they're donating hundreds of millions of dollars to also politicians. 
And like, I just don't understand almost any of this because this was like, like one of the biggest cases of fraud and one of the biggest cases of just gross misuse of management and funds. And it just like, it just seems like everything went wrong. Like, I don't know how no one saw this was going on. How do you have a billion dollar company without proper accounting books and proper payroll and accounting for payroll and actually even knowing how much assets you have, which they said they didn't. It gets me frustrated and it makes me super sad for everyone on BlockFi too as well, but it makes me sad. I did go mention a little bit of Voyager news too. It did seem like Binance is trying to get into Voyager and hopefully Binance can maybe do something with either Celsius or BlockFi themselves, but this has been probably one of the worst things we've ever seen in terms of a bankruptcy case so far. So subscribe if you guys want to, give me your thoughts down below, but geez, this was awful.